Welcome back. We are here on eToro looking at the, the commodities market and the precious metals market. And you may see that I have changed my layout a little bit. I have added the CCI uh, or the commodity channel index to my analysis. And um, to people that don't know the commodity channel index, uh, essentially is very similar to the RSI. However, the reason why I've, uh, it's an oscillator, and the reason why I've added it is because I think that the uh, CCI is uh, far better when it comes to the graphics, whether to show where we have overbought positions or oversold positions. Uh, while the RSI, I technically only use the number of the RSI to see whether or not we are under 30 or above, uh, above 70 to when we're oversold or overbought. So I will use both of these um, uh, indicators to, to determine whether or not we are overbought or oversold and where technically, we, and technically where we're going. So uh, this is going to be my daily analysis for, the, for Friday, um, October 16, 2020. If you'd like to support our channel, you're welcome to hit the subscriber down, uh, button down here in the corner. Uh, thanks a lot. We have received a lot of uh, new subscribers in the last few weeks and uh, we are extremely thankful um, you're welcome to like this channel and also hit the bell button in order to see our newest videos so it has been a very turbulent day today a lot of bad news technically um, it looks like any stimulus bill or talks of a, a new stimulus bill are um, are not really realistic before uh, the election um and, and and as well coronavirus numbers around all around the world are soaring at the moment and of course this is not good for the economy uh, numbers for jobless claims also were released only a few minutes ago and they show that jobless claims are now around uh they were higher than expected around 900,000 and that is not a good news and therefore markets that have been overbought, they are falling significantly today. So we're not going to start with oil. We're going to start with the US dollar index. Uh, we have it here. We can see that the US dollar index has risen significantly today. So this gives an indication where commodities are going today. Most of them are falling. Stocks are also falling. And usually uh, this is uh, also a sign where they are going. So we are up nearly uh, a percentage today. And that's quite a lot for, for, for the US dollar index. And um, we have seen major currency pairs drop significantly. Uh, commodities, uh, commodities drop significantly like uh, WTI. And, um, and we have also seen the indexes. Uh, fall significantly due to stocks falling. So uh, we are trading above the 50 moving average at this point. We are at the 93.83 at this point, and uh, we may run into resistance at this area. We can see that we had a, a um, area here which is fairly flat, uh, where we were hanging around for quite a long time, uh, only uh, two three weeks ago. So. If you look at the technical indicators for, for, the, for the US dollar index, we are currently not overbought, not oversold. We are right in the middle of things. So we there's a lot of room to the upside. There could be a lot of buying and there could also be a lot of selling. At this point, it looks like the $50, not the 50 moving average is um, support and therefore we will go higher. The stochastic is also indicating that we have upwards momentum, and the uh, and the uh, and the uh, MACD is about to cross the signal line, indicating uh, bullish momentum. It's probably not going to cross today, but uh, tomorrow it will cross the signal line, indicating bull indicating bullish momentum. So this has had quite an effect. Uh, sorry, oil. So quite an effect on oil today. So we have fallen nearly 4% when it was low. It's at around 3.75% at the moment. It has fallen from the highs. And we probably have some um, 
some downwards momentum uh, before we turn around from here. Um, this could get really ugly as well, to be, to be fairly honest. We were overbought. We can see that we were, well, every time this uh, CCI uh, gets an upper shadow, it is basically a sign that we are in overbought territory. We can see here, this is a lower shadow. We were oversold territory. We can see we had a massive sell up here. And it is really good uh, to indicate when we are on a rise and when we are on a, on a downward trajectory. At this point, we are basically on a downward trajectory. You can see the, compared to the RSI, this is uh, showing a lot more movement where we're technically going, while the RSI is technically flat. But the, the, um, the number for the RSI is technically the only thing I'm looking at. At the moment, we are at 49, and we, we may fall uh, significantly further. If we break uh, $39 uh, for WI, we will go all the way towards this um, these lows. And we may fall even lower than that. Probably because most of this was due to speculation that there was going to be additional stimulus. Um, when we fell for the second time here, I truly expected this market to break down significantly. But this move... These four green candles here were basically uh, speculations into uh, that into additional stimulus, which is probably not going to come. It, never say never, but it's highly unlikely this close to an election, uh, which is getting closer, that the Democrats are giving going to give Donald Trump any um, any. Uh, any win of any sort that he can use to say, now we're going to get additional money to the population and so on. I don't believe that's going to happen. Senate uh, has also, Senate Republicans have also uh, uh, pointed out that it's not going to be any more stimulus before, before the election. So, uh, so therefore, we are starting to break down because that will definitely hurt the economy. Subsequently, the uncertainty after the uh, elections are is probably going to make this market or all the markets really volatile and they will most likely decrease significantly. Technical indicators, we are about to cross the signal line in the MACD, indicating bearish momentum. We haven't crossed the signal line yet at the in the stochastic, but we can look at the CCI, momentum is to the downside and we will most likely go towards the um, 200 moving average first. Um, it has been resilient, for example, here um, and over here and over here. So we need to basically cross the 200 moving average in order to go to these levels. If we go to these levels and that breaks, then we'll go to for $35, then probably all the way down to $30. To the upside, if we break the 50 moving average, then we'll go to these highs of uh, uh, $43.9. At this moment, uh, at this moment, we are trading within this range. I got a lot of questions about why uh, the dollar was rising so significantly uh, yesterday, like we did here. People were getting uh, quite scared that this uh, would be a massive move to the upside. It could have been. We are actually trading and have been trading for several weeks, even months, uh, within this area. And it nothing has really changed. We can just look all the way back here until all the way back to uh, to uh, to June, uh, where we have basically traded in between this area. So uh, so uh, we may go to the highs here of uh, forty three dollars. I would not bet the ranch on it. Um, I more likely would think that we'll go lower due to the economic uh, uh, conditions of the world economy. Um, so, but it is possible to uh, to uh, to go to forty three. This should be massive resistance, and this should be massive support at least at this point. So, if you look at natural gas, natural gas has rallied again, um, and this should be an indication. Just see all the gray area here, the gray area here, also over here. 
where natural gas have been has been overbought and we basically declined. For example, this area here was this peak and we dropped several uh, percentages down towards the 50 moving average. We are in similar situation now. We are rallying, but I don't believe this rally will be uh, sustainable. We'll probably get to uh, 3.12 uh, uh, and then we'll fall towards the 50 moving average. Other indicators are fairly bullish, but, but we are quite overstretched with natural gas. We can get really stretched, for example, here. It can go absolutely ballistic. So have in mind, it is possible for this market to just absolutely take off. Um, but I would not enter a buying position at this point. I would wait until, until we get close to the 50 moving average, uh, then have a turnaround and then buy. This is just too risky. Um, a fall towards the 50 moving average can basically well, hurt your account, pretty much. If we cross the 50 moving average, then we have the 200 moving average underneath. If we break this um, top of 2.12, uh, then we're going to uh, this top here, which is 3.4, and then we'll go much higher, 3.77 and, and beyond. So, if you look at copper, Copper is one of the, the commodities that have uh, broken down earlier today, but now has rallied. So copper doesn't really know where to go at this point. Every time we get close to these highs of we can run up here of uh, of um, three point one, then we have a ton of turnaround. We saw it here. We got close to it here. Turn around. And when we basically get to these lows here, then copper also jumps. So we're working within this range at, at this point. I don't expect copper to go much higher, mainly due to the uh, low demand, lower demand in the world economy or expected lower demand in the world economy. Um, so I do expect this market to go, the copper to go lower. Uh, we first have to break the 50 moving average then that opens the door for the lows here of 2.83. And after that, we have the 200 moving average at 2.6. Uh, major producers of the copper expect prices of the end of the year to be around 2.6. So um, I would not bet against them. I They have far more knowledge of this market than, than the most of us, and therefore... I do expect this market to turn around at some point within the next two two months. Technical indicators are are mixed. We are not in overbought. We're not oversold. Uh, both the CCI and the RSI are are showing that the stochastic is technically flat at this point, and but the MACD is trading uh, is uh, above the signal line. So, well, uh, we just need. Uh, signs of where this market is going. If we break above here, then of course we go higher. Don't expect that. If we break below the 50 moving average, then we're going all the way down to this support level. And if this support level breaks, then we'll go towards the 200 moving average. So if you look at gold, so gold um, hasn't fallen significantly then. I did expect it to fall uh, much more due to the rise in the US dollar index. We are still trading underneath the 50 moving average, which is about to make a turnaround. And this will most likely be the reason why we'll go lower towards the 200 moving average. We have a trend line here, which we have to get through. We have tested it four or five times over here, over here, and here. And we tested it recently on Monday and we broke down. And it doesn't seem like we are going to break that trend line or break above the 50 moving average. If we were to break through the 50 moving average, then we have this entire area here that we have to get through. And at this point, I just don't see that happening. We will eventually because... It, uh, because of um, uh, the policies of the uh, central banks around the world and especially the Federal Reserve. Um, 
but we probably also need to see the US dollar index fall further in order for this market to to rise. Um, that is a good, it will be a good indication that we're about around, ready to go higher if the US dollar index decreases. But it is rising and therefore the gold is going to have a really hard time. We are, we have resistance. No, that's not right. We have uh, support, I mean, at uh, 1855 and in this area here. So 1850 is support, 1800 is significant support, and it's just above the 200 moving average as well. So my bet is that we go towards the 15 move, move, uh, that we go towards the 1800 level and then we bounce. Very similar for silver. Silver has uh, rallied and then broke down, and but we're still just trading underneath the 50 moving average. We may have rallied up towards the 50 moving average, but we'll break down. We're not overbought, not oversold. We are in a, in, in no man's land for 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 these indicators. Um, stochastic is showing signs of weakness. We are about it's trading downwards. And the RSI, no, it's to cast MACD, sorry, is about to turn around, indicating bearish momentum. We will most likely go towards the $20 level, which is around here. That will also coincide with the 200 moving average, which will go up like this. So a breakdown towards the 200 moving average or the $20 price level we'll see this market bounce. So so that is probably what we are going to witness um, in the coming future. So you look at Cocoa. So Cocoa has fallen further today. Um, and as I said yesterday, this is an area that we have been uh, visiting. Uh, we have been, we have seen before way back here also here, also in this entire area here was uh, support. And now we're uh, testing that area again. So if we were to break through this area, then we are going much lower to this level at 2.218 two, uh, 2 and then further to 2.087. Um, a bounce from here, we'll see that the 200 moving average is resistant at 2.462. And after that, uh, 50 moving average. So we have quite a lot of um, resistance above. Um, we are trading in the middle, in mid range, I can say. These are the highs, and these are the lows for Kakoa, and we're technically right in the middle. So we could, what we're witnessing now may be that this trend has changed and we are going all the way to the lows before we go higher. That is also possible. If we break through this area, we break through this area as well, then there's nothing prevent preventing us from going all the way to these lows. However, if you look at the technical indicators, uh, this basically shows that we are in a uh, oversold position at this point. And you can see every time we get overbought or oversold, this market acts uh, or can act um, very aggressively. For example, here in this area where we got overbought, we fell substantially. Um, we are almost over, uh, oversold in the RSI as well. MACD is looking really uh, bearish and the same goes for the Sarcastic. So if we look at Platinum, So platinum has uh, dropped uh, a little bit today, but it has rallied again up towards the 200 moving average. And at this point, we, we have seen this move before. It's we, we drop and then we pull back, we drop and we pull back. There's just a lot of uh, support underneath there. This entire area, you can just look at this area here has been historical, historically supportive. Um, 
and underneath that we have this additional area so i don't favor the downside in this market i favor the upside uh, we may see this market go lower but just have in mind that we have been here for a very very long time in the past and then we bounced if we were to uh, rally to the upside, we first of all trading underneath the 200 moving average, then we have the 50 moving average, then we'll go to these highs at um, uh, 954 and to 978 and then to, to 1000. Technical indicators are, well, the, the CCI and the RSI are, well, not showing us a whole lot. Probably the CCR is showing that we are a little bit in the downtrend. So casting is basically pointed to lower momentum or downwards momentum. And the, RS, the MACD is technically flat at this point. So if you look at sugar. Sugar has uh, broke down today and then rallied again. And at this point, sugar is in an area of, of over bought in a basically overbought position and it has been for quite some time um, this should be a warning we are overstretched at this point uh, we went all the way to 0 0.14 15 50 and we broke down now we're trying to probably test that uh, level again if we break that then we'll go higher if not we'll go straight towards the 50 moving average the technical indicators for, for, for stochastic has turned around, indicating bullish momentum. Uh, MACD is also fairly bullish, but I wouldn't be surprised if we turned around here and then went straight down towards the 50 moving average. This is a market which, um, which uh, needs a pullback at this point. When you have this uh, kind of rally and pullback towards the 50 moving average is basically a buying opportunity uh to get this for a better a better value so if you look at wheat we can see that we have uh, pulled back a little bit today we are um look like we are we are creating a triangle here we can basically make a, a minor triangle and that technically means that we are going to see something um either pull to the upside or break down i am favoring the downside at this point um mainly due to this how this market has behaved you can see that we have pulled towards the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average here and then gone up to the upside pull back upside and now it seems like we need another pullback we had another one here and so on so it seems like we're probably going to have a pull back towards the 50 moving average before going higher. If you look at the uh, RSI, it is not overbought uh, yet, but the CCI is indicating that we have been and are in the overbought um, situation uh, due to this massive increase here. The other technical indicators have not turned around yet, for example, the MACD and the stochastic. So tomorrow, probably we'll have a breakout to the upside. Then we'll go to the to these highs here at 615. A breakdown below this trend line uh, will see us go towards the 50 moving average. So hope you find this video helpful. You're welcome to support our channel by subscribing hitting the subscribe down here in the corner. That helps us a lot. Uh, hit the like button and the bell button in order to see our newest videos. Uh, I do expect the market to be fairly volatile in the coming weeks. So, uh, so watch the leverage and watch your positions. Uh, good luck and thank you very much.